Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. John LaFouke. Welcome to CBSDoc.com. We were all so saddened to hear about Senator Ted Kennedy's death from brain cancer. We're going to take you behind the scenes now. I'm in one of the edit bays at the CBS Broadcast Center in New York City, and I'm about to interview Dr. Henry Friedman from Duke University. So I'm going to take you, and hopefully we're going to learn something more about brain cancer. Hi, it's John. How are you? Yeah. John, how you doing? We'll talk about vaccines first. Um, people hear about vaccines, they think about smallpox vaccine, polio vaccine, preventing an infectious disease, a childhood immunization. What are you talking about? What's the concept of a cancer vaccine? The concept of a cancer vaccine is totally different. It's not to prevent the cancer, you've already got it. It's to take care of the microscopic disease that's left behind after other therapy is done and rev up one's immune system so that it seeks out and attacks the cancer as a foreign invader. It's totally different than for an infectious disease. You're absolutely right. We're not preventing cancer. We're treating established cancer. Does it seem like these vaccines are actually helping patients? The answer is yes. It is a therapy that, in my opinion, is unequivocally working. And in your best patients, uh, what do you think it's doing for them? I think it's increasing survival. I think in patients who are able to get um, uh, our vaccines, they're living longer with a better quality of life. I'm not saying that they're all being cured, but I think it's unequivocally helping patients. Explain to me about a drug like Avastin. I mean, how are you thinking about how that works? Many people simplistically think it just shuts off the blood supply to tumors. Well, that's simplistic. For all we know, um, uh, it may make the blood supply uh, normal to a tumor, so things can reach the tumor more readily. Some people think it attacks stem cells, tumor stem cells. So if you said to me, how does Avastin work, I would give you my honest academic answer and say, I don't have a clue. And I think most people would say the same thing. Uh, why are, why is everybody seem to be getting Avastin now? The reason is that in trials that were done initially at Duke and then were done nationally, it became clear that if you had a recurrent malignant glioma and were treated with Avastin, you had a very striking chance of having a better quality and duration of life. It is clearly a very um, uh, active uh, uh, agent, though we don't know exactly what it's doing. We know it's making people live better and live longer. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. Henry, can you please describe to us the whole problem about treating cancer in the brain? There's a lot of problems with it. The first is that you can have cancer in a part of your body that you can sacrifice. I mean, you can sacrifice uh, an arm or a leg if you have to. You can't sacrifice your brain. The second issue is that the therapies that you use may be damaging to the environment as well as to the tumor. And so you can have side effects that affect the brain that really undercut the benefit to the patient. The third is the so-called blood-brain barrier, which is a, uh, a real barrier that prevents many things in the blood from getting into the brain. All of these things make, in my opinion, brain cancer the most challenging cancer of all. Let's talk to the people out there who may have newly diagnosed brain cancers. And they go on the internet and they see, oh my gosh, the survival is in months not years. Um, what do you say to them now in the year 2009? You say to them that there is hope. You say to them that there is an ever-increasing fraction, minority uh, nevertheless, but a fraction of patients who seem to be surviving and in fact being cured of malignant glioma. It's no question it's a minority, but you give them hope because the hope is real. It's not just holding their hands and singing kumbaya. It's telling them that there are long-term survivors with high quality of life. And you don't just read the internet, because if you read the internet, what you're going to learn is, ah, malignant glioma, you're dead. It's that simple. That's the equation that's out there. And the answer is, it's not always that case. State of mind actually can help improve the immune system and fight cancers, right? I have no doubt that the reason that hope is so effective is that it mobilizes the family's strength. It gives them the chance to live day by day. They can embrace the new therapies. And I think that there certainly could be true physiological effects that hope could provide to patients to uh, increase their chance of doing well. I can't prove it. I'm not aware of the data on it because I don't really know that field very well. But I think that hope is the single most important foundation you can give anybody with any kind of a uh, malignancy, especially a brain tumor, but any kind of malignancy. Hope is critical.